Firstly, a very good uh, morning, good afternoon, and uh, potentially even a good evening to all of you joining in today. Uh, thank you so much for uh, taking out these 60 minutes out of your schedules to, to sit with us and, and listen to what we have to say and, and even give you some insights and potentially some, some food for thought and, and, and information to process to take back to your businesses or projects, whatever it may, or consultancies, whatever it may be that you're working on. Um, so as, as stipulated on, on the, the invite and on today's uh, uh, commencing slide, we're basically talking about um, managing customer identities and how we can do this effectively and efficiently uh, across, the, uh, across the business and across your projects as well, and what kind of tools are available uh, for you to uh, engage in with these certain uh, softwares and technologies and all as well. So to take you through today's session uh, will be myself and my colleague Dinali. So my name is Sulakshana, but uh, it's much easier to remember and call me Sula. Uh, I'm a senior account manager attached to WSO2 and will be taking you through uh, the first section of today's presentation. And my colleague uh, Dinali, who is an associate lead solutions engineer for the IAM team here at WSO2, will be taking you through more of the technical section of today's presentation. And uh, our planned presentation time is, is roughly 30 to 40 minutes, followed by a Q&A session. Um, but guys, uh, please feel free to, do, to drop your questions into the Q&A tab uh, that you can see on this uh, uh, meeting bridge. And uh, we'd be more than happy to either answer them in chat itself, or we do we can uh, take them through the Q and A section that is at the end of this presentation, or at the uh, split point from section one to section two. So just to take you through it, section one will be where I will be taking you through some of the uh, interesting um, uh, findings and uh, observations that were made from the total economic impact report. Um, that was done on the identity server by uh, Forrester and of course section two would be more of the technical conversation where Dinali would actually be showing uh, you uh, an organizational management uh, feature that WSO2 currently has uh, worked on and made commercially available uh, to its customers and how this came about and the kind of thinking behind it and how you can leverage it in your business. Um, so moving forward from there, we're going to section one, as mentioned, and this is basically in relation to the total economic or the TEI um, report that was done by Forrester. Now, if we were to take a step back, and if I was to ask any of you back in 2019, when you were doing your Atlas plans and your three to five year projections in terms of the trends and momentums and uh, the, the involvements of your business in your vertical, you would have told me a very different uh, a story and painted a very different picture but obviously we know that we are nowhere near that anymore and and within a span of 13 to 15 months we saw trends and momentums have continental shifts and drifts in terms of the the attention to which it was being given and and what what now was the new normal and what now is the new priority for a business and they say a picture paints a thousand words but uh, I believe numbers can have the same impact, and I just want to show you some of the uh, numbers and and points that came out from some of the research that we have conducted and all and and read on and all as well. For example, McKinsey and companies says that the digital transformation journey of companies and industries has been preponed by seven years. Thirteen months or fifteen months has had an impact on all verticals where their digitization journeys have been brought forward by seven years. So, what you would have planned as your future state is now actually your current state. And the quantum in, 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 in dollars and cents of how much this has grown, you can be seen through market and markets um, analysis of the cloud application market, where they initially uh, projected it as a $171 billion uh, uh, industry in 2025 has already surpassed that by two folds and be valued at 356 billion right now. And if that is not enough, we can see as per Gartner's um, understanding, companies are now looking at a CIM focused approach and trying to be uh, geared for 2022. And they are saying that 72% of these companies evaluated are having this adoption mechanism in place, but only 86% of those companies will be able to uh, successfully implement or, or kickstart that conversation in this year itself. So we can see that there is clearly the, the, the need and the urgency for uh, the, the strategic change 
we can see the value and the quantum by which it has changed and we can see how the market or how the how the economy is is reacting uh, to these said changes now we took all of this information and we want to see you know what is wso2's impact and how is wso2 uh, uh, playing in this space of change and we actually partnered up with forrester and we we had forrester do a total economic impact um, analysis uh, on and study on wso2 and we actually had four of our key customers uh, who are white labeled in terms of their 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 names and all the stuff but they actually worked with forrester to come up with an assessment of how the identity server has been a part of their success journey and how it has uh, uh, how it has helped them overcome any covid related or any uh, uh, project related uh, hurdles that they may have been exposed to now from those four companies and their and their their company types company size their their their, uh, their economic impactors and also overall verticals we created a persona company that had 20000 employees that had an annual turnover of 3 billion dollars um that had a user base that was going from 800000 in year 1 to 2 million in year 3 and they had a, a deployment of the identity server to the tune of uh, 110 to 150000 us dollars in addition to of course their own overhead charges and staffing costs as well now the numbers that you're seeing are wso2 specific but of course the vectors and the areas of impact are quite common and would be seen across any uh, identity solution provider but what's what's important to note is the numbers and what's important to note is how we are affecting those vectors as well so from the from from that point onwards if you were to look at the main understandings of how wso2 or or how this identity provider has enabled the companies it 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 can be bucketed into three main sections and that is as you can see on the slide it's centralized identity functionality new growth and scalable scalability in opportunities and improved customer experience these are all very customer oriented customer focused um uh, outcomes and also some of these have a lower level which is internally a developed focused outcome as well for example if you were to take your centralized identity functionality previously identities were managed on an application level and they were what we would call a siloed method of approach to identity management but with the use of um, a good identity provider you are able to have your single point of truth which enables your application development and your back end development for your uh, business projects to be done faster and more seamlessly because you don't have replications or you don't have security concerns in terms of multiple securities or multiple uh, users being created now if you were to take that and put that into a customer facing situation and your your front end project teams they are able to take that advantage and make new growth and scalability in terms of opportunities because they are able to create new engagements for customers they are able to create new products new expansions increase the 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 profit per customer increase the engagement and stickiness per client and that is why you would see that you have a improved customer experience because now overall your customers are engaging with you more they are they are invited to to work with you better they are able to use more of your services more of your product more of your company's capabilities now if we were to try and quantify this how did it affect the company that we had created based on the feedback of the four companies that we had uh, interviewed from forester they actually said that in a 3 year period they had 4.5 million projected savings and benefits that they recorded now this is staggering remember i i i i i mentioned that the the price or the cost of the identity server remained constant over the 3 years it did not change and despite that the 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 return on investment is to the tune of almost 300% in terms of an roi now how did this happen and where did this come from the 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 principal cost saving or the principal contributor to this was reduced customer support effort now the fact that the the identity provider sat across the entire uh, software development life cycle 
enable the back end, the, the product team, the, the forward facing teams to be able to develop a product and develop and, and deliver their project with minimum friction and minimum uh, uh, kickbacks and recoil in terms of how they went through their life cycle process. And that over a three year period with scalability and economics of scale and you know learning curves and all applied, attuned to 67% of this 4.5 million benefit to the customer. In addition to that, increased identity uptime. Now, this is a very subjective area and, and it has to be treaded lightly because there are certain aspects such as the deployment patterns, the deployment uh, method methodology, where it is hosted, self-hosted or managed services, or uh, is it in a high availability setup? Is there a geo-replication? How is the disaster recovery done? All these things are impacting but the key point here that we wanted to identify is that there is this 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 common misunderstanding in the identity space especially with the open source providers that reliability is is uh, you know not as much in terms of an in in terms of open source softwares and anyone in this forum who has a cim focus would know that downtime is the kryptonite to a cim solution so in that space, the fact that this was one of the leading indicators to cost saving shows us that we were able to instill confidence and we were able to be uh, firm in terms of how our service is delivered and how our product lasts in those use cases. In addition to that, the fact that developers didn't have to reinvent the wheel every time they wanted to build an application and, and, and deploy an application from a CIM focus point of view enable them to churn out more applications. And this was actually one of the feedback that we got from one of our customers where they were actually able to push out in excess of an average three applications per year over that three year time period. Now, we all know the, 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 the technicalities and the roadblocks and the hurdles that we had to overcome when developing an application and being able to do three of that in a year is definitely something that is noteworthy. And finally, the accelerated time to market. This, I would say, is the positive multiply effect of the previous three coming through because the fact that you are able to be leaner, faster, and be more secure in what you're doing results automatically in the fact that you are able to deliver something much faster from, uh, from your developer table to your, uh, to your uh, website or to your uh, application in your mobile or whatever. Now, if we were to see how this is all facilitated, this would be where the identity server would sit. This API first approach based uh, CIAM solution sits at the heart of your business uh, uh, strategy in terms of bridging your back end with your front end. And in your front end, you would be able to manage your consumers, your customers from an enterprise point of view, your partners, your even your workforce across multiple touch points from your web applications to more, uh, more newly used mobile native platforms and uh, even to the, the future, which is definitely looking at a SaaS and an IDAS um, area of things. And of course, the age old and more matured IoT space, which are still working in. And the fact that you are able to link with third party applications because you have a secure API first approach gives you the flexibility and gives you the ability to be agile in terms of looking at your new business opportunities, looking at your new project, project objectives, looking at bringing in new technologies from a, a development point of view, all while ensuring that you are having minimal to no impact on your back end from the, 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 the legacy systems that you're using to the third parties that you're using, whether it be in a social space or whether it be in a CRM space, et cetera. And, to show you how it actually works from a technical point of view and, and give and walk you through a, a small demo as well is where I'm going to actually hand it over to Dinali from here. And uh, in that in that time space that we're doing it, I do have one small um, poll that I would like to share with the audience today. And I would really appreciate your feedback on it. And um, that would be this following poll that I'm going to post up while uh, I hand over to Dinali to switch over to her sharing as well. So Dinali, if you could just start sharing your screen. And guys, if you could just take a second and please share your feedback on, on, on this uh, uh, current uh, question that is running. It would be great if I could 
uh, if you could see uh, how how people are, uh, are currently posed and it, it gives us some insight and maybe something that we can uh, use as well. Uh, Dinali, I think you can take the poll off for now. No, not end, uh, just close it, top right. All right, I'm seeing eight of 16 responses. If I could ask the rest of the forum to chip in and let us know what your thoughts are. I'll give it another, let's say 30, 30 seconds. All right, oh, this is interesting. We have 50-50 split. Uh, anyone else? Oh, thank you. Um, I, have, I have a couple more on the call. Folks, if I could ask you to just jump in. All right, cool. Um, you know what? I'm going to call it at that. And uh, basically, from what we can see, it's it's quite clear that um, we have quite a few people who are quite a few stakeholders or, or participants today who are looking at organizational management, as well as a good for, good good portion of people who are not yet there, and I think that's really good because we we are we are answering both sides of the question, right? In the situation that you are looking at organizational management, this is how potentially WSO two can be of service and can be used. If you are not, this is this is a good platform to show you how organizational management can be one of the future states for your project or your business and, and, and potentially something that you can talk about maybe back in your teams, et cetera. So uh, I'm going to stop, uh, I'm going to go on mute now and I'm going to give the, the floor to Dinali. Um, if, there, if, if I see that there is one question here, uh, I believe uh, Sunil uh, Dutt has said, um, I have used WS2 IS and certified on it too. How would want to know if I were to consider WS as a centralized or identity to where health application to outsource. I would want to register my application resource. So the query is how do I create resources or functionalities of an application in WS2 and totally outsource authentication and authorize it to WS2. So um, um, Sunil, thanks for the question. Um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll take this answer to the Q&A section uh, and let's, let's, let's finish off this part of the, the presentation and the demo. And once you come to the Q&A section, uh, we'll, we'll pick up the question uh, that you have mentioned, but thanks for that. Uh, and uh, Dinali, back to you. Thanks, Sula. So uh, yeah, let me start off. Uh, so after that brief tip explanation given by Sula, so let's look at how organization management feature, which we are, introducing in the CIM solution will accelerate your digital business benefits. So, yeah. So before we deep dive onto these benefits, so let's look at why we really need an organization management feature or why we get this organization management requirement in your business. So, so in a B2B business user case, so a business has to manage multiple customers, which do businesses in different industries or in the same industry discipline. So for example, a service or a business which provides software for a food chain has to provide software for restaurants and hotels who need their service. So as the main business, needs to cater all these requirements of different customers that they are using. And also each customer of your business will have separate user stores or separate identities to be managed. And moreover, they'll have their own rules and policies to be managed to maintain their end users. And their UIs and logos should, do, should be changed and operate differently for each business. And even a B2C business scenario, the, bis the same business you will uh, sell to different customers, but still they'll have to have different requirements. Like you'll need to deploy this, your deployment in different regions in order to cater the different markets. So for example, if you are working with the customer in NIA region, 
then they, their UIs might be totally in Arabic and their or UI orientation should be changed. And also when you're working with the EU customer, so due to this GDPR compliancy, so you need to have your custom data in an on-prem data center, which is in, in EU region itself, and you have to handle them separately. And even in a workforce IAM scenario, uh, so there can be requirements where you need to manage different departments as different entities of the parent organization. So where these identities operate independently despite of the parent organization. So these are the most common organization management requirement we see in the present market. So you have to have a proper IAM solution if you want to meet these requirements. So let's look at what WC2 Identity Server offers as a feature to achieve all these different types of organization management requirements. Uh, Dins, so the, just before we jump in that, I think there is a question from uh, the audience that has come in the in the chat section. Um, so the question goes, when will we see the organization management B2B feature come as a public feature? Yes. So actually right now, this organization management B2B uh, you feature, we have it as a custom feature. But we are planning to release this as a public feature uh, in the product uh, end of this year. So it is in our roadmap. Uh, so if you if you want this feature before the uh, end of this year or beginning next year, then you always can have it as a custom feature from us where you can request it from. Our uh, so you can talk to our team and get this get this feature for you. Okay, so, so this would be after the 5.12 release uh, yes. is done. Lovely. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank so so uh, when we talk about organization management, like there are two main options that we can use in WSO2 Identity Server to manage your organization. So the first option is you can use multi-tenancy. So you can deploy our product in cloud and share all the resources uh, like primary data source or applications among different organizations so that they can use them independently. Independently, So this is called a tenant in WSO2 domain and the identities will be virtually separated and they'll have no direct contact. So these are like independent organizations that operate themselves independently. So each organization will be subscribed to one tenant and the tenant will be identifi identified by a tenant domain or a realm in the URL. And uh, the, the super tenant in this parent organization will have the rights to create uh, the sub organization as multiple tenants and the parent, organi parent organization or the parent tenant has the capability to disable or enable their sub organization. So this type of organization management is uh, really matching for a organization which has a flat organizational structure. So if you are searching for a flat organization management, then this is the ideal solution. Or if you want to build up an IDAS solution, then this is the ideal feature that you have to look for. Okay, so the next option we are offering you is this B2B organization management. So this is, we, so this we introduced recently and this is for hierarchical organization management. So where there will be a parent organization which provides uh, the service or the platform and the parent organization can have their customers as uh, sub organization. So it will be a structure, I mean, it will be a tree structure where uh, those customers can have their end users or their customers as sub organizations and all. So there will be a tree structure in this organizational structure. And uh, this type of requirement can be highly seen in the healthcare sector, financial and telecommunication sector. 
So we, we came up with this requirement from one of our customers in the telecommunications sector, and we introduced this to them and they uh, with them. So we have improved this feature so that we can provide it as a generic feature to the product. And the end users of this organization can be shared among multiple organizations if needed as collaborators. Hence, this is totally different from the option one. And in this example, which I show in the diagram, uh, so if this is a healthcare platform where uh, MedLife is a healthcare platform uh, or the root organization and healthcare platform uh, will be served multiple, I mean, it will serve multiple hospitals and individual clinics. So in order to subscribe to this platform, uh, so each of these hospital has to create his own organization where they can self-register or the MedLife platform itself can create an organization for them. So once they create an organization, they can subscribe to the MedLife services and they can maintain uh, their sub-organizations and they can have the individual organizational units here. So the end users who are using MedLife services will can subscribe to one or more organizations as uh, they are using the MedLife services. And they can also, um, for example, if I am a user, or if I am a patient who uh, take a report from Greater Health Hospital, then I can share it to, a, uh, then I can show that report to a doctor in Little Star Clinic as well. So likewise, like, so this is a B2B organizational management structure, which we are introducing uh, with our next release. So now uh, the problem is how to decide which option of organization management you should use in this business, in your business. So there are like two, two options of organization management. One is multi-tenancy or the IDAS option. Then the other one is the B2B organization management option. So how do you differentiate these two? So this multi-tenancy can be used when you want to provide identity as a solution or whereas organization management can be used to sell a product or a service to other, other organizations. So in multi-tenancy, there will be like multiple services exposed as independent units, whereas B2B organization management is serving only one service to different organizations. Um, and the other important thing is in multi-tenancy, um, the super admin or the, the, the root of the parent admin gets the, uh, the full rights to create organizations and he has the ability to disable or enable organizations under him. But if, whereas in B2B organization management, it provides a delegated administration rights where, pair, where root administrator can create um, his uh, sub organization administrators and then he can delegate all his administration rights to the sub organization administrator to administrate his organization by themselves. And, uh, in, and also there is another difference like in multi-tenancy, uh, so we use this for flat organization, organization structure, whereas B2B organization management, we use it for hierarchical organization structure. So based on these factors, you can decide what type of organization management is required in your business. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Dins, there's been another uh, question flagged up to us as well, uh, yes. which is with regards to, I think, the, the user interface side of things. So they have said, uh, how uh, do you rebrand UIs for each tenant or organization separately? So actually, when you want to reband, I mean, um, so if you want to have like right now in the WSO2 identity, we're having a central UI to uh, for the login page. But if you want to change it per as per your organization, then so you can have a parameter for the for your organization name or tenant domain, and based on that, you can 
uh, popular in multiple UIs. So that is uh, one way of like doing uh, branding UIs per organization. Awesome. Uh, I, I hope that answers the question, guys. Okay. So sorry, continue, Yeah. So, so if you select WSO2 identity server to fulfill your organization management requirements, so let's see what are the benefits that you get out of us. So the, the first and foremost, I mean, the first benefit that you get is like uh, our availability of WSO2 stack. So as we, ha as we are having like three full fresh products in our WSO2 stack, so it's easy for you to, for your business integrations and it's a key advantage of having WSO2 identity server. And also with the availability of like multiple extension points, so you can easily customize uh, to cater your business requirement. And also like when, it com when you compare the cost of our product, it's far more comparatively less cost. And also the time to go to market is really less and it accelerates your go to market. So these are the, um, the key benefits that you get if you use WSO2 identity server in your, in your organization management requirements. And finally, let's look at like, what are our success stories behind this organization management? So the first happy customer we, uh, we have is our telco provider in Europe. So, he's, they, are, so they are the pioneers like, for implementing this B2B hierarchical organization management in WSO2 identity server. And they wanted to, read, so they had a legacy uh, CIM system or an identity and access management system. So they wanted to replace their legacy system and to build a standard CIM platform with the full fledged organization management requirements. And they wanted to manage like 100 million devices all around the world. So, the, uh, so this is the main uh, key point that we came up with that there is uh, a greater demand in organization management requirements in the market. So right now, like even unknowingly, we were serving like more than 20 customers with the organization management requirement. So we have, uh, so my next customer, Mutinix, is also our like, um, so he, this is our one of our oldest customers who are providing hyper-converged infrastructure services to other companies. So they do had this organization management requirement indirectly in the business requirement, but we were able to cater this not through a proper organization management feature like we did for the previous customer, but we did it um, through our customization. So we had a lot of extension points. So based on that, their business requirement was easily catered in order to um, fulfill their needs. And WSO2 Identity Server has been able to achieve their user growth and faster go to market in three months. So still this customer is with us due to our uh, better support and uh, better commitment from WSO2 side. Uh, uh, Dins, I think based on the previous uh, question, previous uh, uh, case study that we just showed of the telco, I think someone has raised a question which is, how can the deployment be scaled in multi-tenancy? Yes. So actually right now, like, um, so when we talk about multi-tenancy or organization management, it always shared the resources of the identity server cluster into multiple organizations. So in that case, uh, so we will we'll always have a maximum limit that we can handle when it comes to organizations or tenants. So right now, so we have tested, uh, so when we so when we do our lab test on tenants and we have customers like who are using right now we have we are able to come up with like thousand tenants with secondary user stores in a single um, two node cluster of identity server and also so we can scale up this identity server cluster and we can use tenant sharding to have like multiple tenants in different cluster. We can share tenants among, um, so we can separate out tenants into multiple clusters and we can manage them separately. So we should be able to uh, achieve like scaling through this. 
Awesome. Thanks, Wendy. Okay. You can get back to it. Yes. So the next customer is from uh, Italy. So, so this is a leading financial company in the household credit sector with like 61% of control by like International Credit Agricole Group. And they have built a digital platform on top of WSO2 identity server and WSO2 API manager. So they utilize the WSO2 stack and the identity and access management features of WSO2 identity server to fulfill their uh, the new initiatives. And they able, they are happy with the fast and go to market capabilities with us. So yeah, so I think that I ends think the yeah? yeah. Okay, lovely. Um, thanks, Dee, for that. Uh, taking on all those questions as well, and I hope uh, I hope the forum found it insightful. I think we are good to go into our Q and A section right now, uh, yeah. and I think we can look at uh, uh, what so was shared question, right? on yeah on the question. I think maybe Dins, if you can just process it for a second and see if it's something that uh, we can take on right now. Yeah. Uh, so what he's asking is, I have. Use WSO to identify when certified on it too. How, however, would want to know if I want if I were to consider centralized or identity middleware helping applications to outsource the authorization part and keep user stores outside the application. I want to register my application resources on WSO two and post authentication. Say, what would want the user? claim and state all resources to use the application. So the query is how do I create resource or functionalities of an application in WS2 and totally outsource authentication and authorization? Yeah. Uh, keep user stores. So, uh, so when you use WSO2 as the as your central identity and access management, then your applications and your user stores will be considered as two different identities, which are apart from each other. So, um, so you can connect user stores separately to WSO2 identity server, and you can manage them separately, and. And also you can connect any of the applications to identity server and manage them separately. So in your case, if you want to, um, I mean, so you wanted to retrieve uh, user information as user claims, then it is possible like you can populate your ID token or so if you are using OAuth open ID connect, then uh, so you can take whatever the user information as user claims in the ID token. So this can be uh, configured uh, per application. Like, so you can configure the claims per application. And, and also if you want to control, I mean, in the application side, if you have some set of resources to be controlled based on the, the user's roles or permissions, then definitely, um, so you might have to have a third party permission management. Uh, so which you can do it through some, I mean, uh, so you can have it in the WSO2 identity server as well. So in the application side, you can have a predefined set of permissions and you can map them to some set of roles. And based on the roles and scope management, you can, you can easily achieve your requirement if needed. So like there are different ways of achieving this, but I'm not fully clear on the question that you are asking. Um, so I'm just um, create resources of functionalities of that which totally outsource. So um, Sunil, would would it help if if I if I maybe uh, unmuted you to to maybe share it live? Would that be easier, Sunil? If you could just confirm the same on the chat, I can do that as well. If, if, if you want, you can do a follow up on that itself. Okay, lovely. Yes. Let me just uh, let me just give you the control. Hello, Sunil, can, 
are you able to So you can unmute yourself and yeah tell us your problem Yeah uh, yeah I can hear you and uh, I'm on unmute yes Hi Sunil uh, go ahead to... Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, basically, yeah, if you have role based access control and you have uh, internal to external role mapping for each service provider which you have registered, uh, mm -hmm. I do know that the user store and this is totally uh, like a service provider. I can register my application and then the user store is uh, anything Active Directory or uh, whatever is the user store that can be outside. The query is like, um, say, I have an application which uh, can do a product create, product listing and a number of things. Once you log into my application, you can do a certain set of features on the application. Okay. Yeah. So each user, uh, based on his, uh, his role or his group, or if you have if you have implemented role-based access control, then based on some, some criteria, you will you'll get to know whether he has the permission to do that or not. Yeah. So uh, so I just don't want a role to be given out as a claim uh, in the token, or uh, if, I, if I ask for the claims again, uh, uh, post my authentication if I get my claims. What I would want to do is uh, register the functionalities which are there in the application so that um, the user, uh, the WSO2, I can log into WSO2 and create the roles and the groups in WSO2 and manage the permissions on these resources at WSO2 level instead of anything on the application level at all. Yeah, so if you want to manage this, I mean, the actions or the, the permissions in WSO2 site, what you can do is, um, so you can add custom permissions to our existing permission tree. So that is possible. Uh, so that you can do applying by... The permission, applying the permission, on, I have the set of permissions uh, in uh, this one. And I also know that we can create users and groups roles uh, there yeah. in WSO2. But the, the permissions would be given on the functionalities of WSO2, right? Like our... Uh, the I no, want so you can add custom. custom. What I'm saying is you can add custom permissions. So whatever the application should have, so you can add additional permissions to the permission tree. So mm -hmm. if you add those permissions to the permission tree and you can create some set of roles, which mm -hmm. these permissions will be, uh, I mean, you can apply these, your custom permissions, and then you can assign those to users so that you can take, those permissions on the ID token. So for that, you might okay. need to. Um, so we can use SACML as well. I mean, so if you if you XSML, want to uh, for attribute based access control is what you're saying. Yeah. So XSML. Yes. No. Yeah. No, yeah. No. I think yeah. If I have custom permissions, that itself are my resources. For each of my product create product listing, I need to have a permission created. So permissions would be the uh, resources of my uh, digit my, uh, my application. Yeah, so in that case, what you have to do is just create, uh, I mean, you Custom can add permission. additional permit permissions to the permission tree, which is like mm -hmm. application related. And then you can manage them in different roles, like maybe application roles or some other roles. And this is specific to my application, right? That uh, all these uh, custom permissions which I've add, uh, added is only for the application which I have registered for. And it's not visible. So right now, like, if you add these permissions to the permission tree, it will be global. So you can, I mean, you can have a different annotation to uh, identify different permissions to different applications. So you can, you can assign it to some set of like maybe application one role to the application one related permissions. And like, so you can have something like that. Okay, but, but uh, the scope wise, uh, it is not, uh, it is not specific. Uh, it's not only uh, for my application, but it is a uh, gender, uh, it's a, uh, uh, global permission tree which I have added on. So my second uh, application would also see these permissions. Uh, uh, no, unless like uh, so, if you uh, so if you have any scope or role based, I mean access control, then definitely only the the permissions that application. I mean, so application can have like uh, some set of predefined roles. So those roles will have only the specific roles related to that permission. So only that uh, the your given permissions for that particular application uh, will be shown, uh, not okay. the other. Yeah. So we I can separate that. out. Just just a last query, yeah. like uh, from the admin's perspective, as I log in into WSO2, I have three applications and I have created mm -hmm. some, some permissions there. So the and I have three admins who would log into WSO2 specifically for each of my applications. So 
the admin should only get the list of permissions specific to the application when he is trying to assign any users or roles for this application, right? So does he see the yeah, whole list so. or does he see only the list specific to my application when he is adding the role, uh, role, uh, users to my application? Does he see the permission tree which is entire set or is it specific to my application is what he sees there when he assigns so the permission. So what he sees is only the permission which is specific to what he is assigned to. So that will be only specific to uh, that user and the application because you can add application, I mean, application based, I mean, for application, you can have role based access control so that then only the role specific to that application you can see. And even if you if you retrieve the user's permissions, then only the permissions that is uh, available okay. for him is I mean, you can see only. Yeah, we'll, we'll try it out then. Yeah, thank, thank yeah. you. I'll just try that out uh, because I was seeing that as a global thing uh, when I did so. So okay. that is when I brought this query. Yeah. Uh, if if there is any tendency or if it's application specific, I'll again recheck. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah. Thanks. Lovely. Thanks for that, Sunil. Thanks for the engaging conversation. Um, all right. Uh, I think we have another question from Alberto Martin. Uh, is this product available on public cloud marketplaces, AWS, Azure, Google? Um, uh, Alberto, are you referring to a, to the, the availability of WS2 uh, identity and identity server in the space of an iDestroid, is it? Uh, is, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, okay. Um, so uh, I think I'll take this one. So currently the, the IDES solution from my, the WS2's identity server is under reconstruction and is actually uh, set to be uh, uh, GA later on this year towards Q4. Uh, it's coming as a, a brand new uh, revamped version of our uh, pre-existing identity cloud. Uh, and it is going to be much more robust and it's actually going to contain a lot more features of the on-prem version that we see running right now for the identity server. Uh, there is more information to come for this, but right now, if you do have a need, we do have workarounds in terms of uh, how we manage uh, uh, IDES related project need of a customer. So if there is something that you need to work on, I'm more than happy to get on a conversation with regards to it. Uh, but right now, yes, to answer your question, it is under uh, construction and will be available towards the end of Q4 this year, definitely into Q1 next year. I Okay, lovely. Uh, anyone else, guys? Questions, queries, um, anything you want to uh, find out about today's session or about WC2 or about the identity server or anything like that? I think we do have a couple more polls that you would just like to share with you all. Uh, uh, on your way out just to just to give us some feedback and maybe we can have those um, up now. Yeah, so, so we have the poll up and running right now and if you could just share your feedback on this, that'd be great. Um, it's just two very simple questions and uh, it's just for us to gauge how we can further support you guys and and maybe even, even uh, find out what exactly um you would like to know in terms of um this as well uh dinali while the while while the forum speaks would you like to just confirm what the link was is that for sunil sunil if you just check the chat window i think dinali has shared something that you may be able to take back and just look at all right, lovely. Uh, so just to uh, just to sum it up, guys, we have a couple of folks uh, who would like to uh, uh, have us reach out, and we will get in touch with you, folks, uh, shortly. Uh, to the rest of the forum and and to Dinali, thank you so much for joining, guys, in for today's session. Um, it indeed was very interesting and very insightful, and I hope you were able to uh, expand your knowledge or at least even find out uh, what potential uh, is there for you in terms of your identity requirements and how WC2 can help you as well. And uh, please do keep in touch. Please do reach out to us um, if there is anything that we could help you out with. Uh, I will be just sharing my details uh, in the chat window if you want to reach out to me or, um, or want to get in touch via LinkedIn or anything like that. I have just posted my details in uh, the chat window and I hope you have access to it. Please do let me know if there's anything you need. 
and we can definitely take this uh, conversation further as well. Um, if there is nothing else, guys, thank you so much for joining and I hope you have a great uh, remaining week and, and hope you uh, stay safe during the weekend. And um, good luck with uh, all your projects and keep in touch. Thank you so much for joining in.